A modern bailey castle is a fortification with a wooden or stone keep situated on a raised earthwork called a mot, accompanied by an enclosed courtyard, or bailey, surrounded by a protective ditch and palisade. Relatively easy to build with unskilled, often forced, labor, but still militarily formidable. These castles were built across northern Europe from the 10th century onwards, spreading from Normandy and Anjou in France into the Holy Roman Empire in the 11th century. The Normans introduced the design into England and Wales following their invasion in 1066. Modern Bailey castles were adopted in Scotland, Ireland, the Low Countries and Denmark in the 12th and 13th centuries. By the end of the 13th century, the design was largely superseded by alternative forms of fortification. But the earthworks remain a prominent feature in many countries. Architecture Structures A Motten Bailey Castle was made up of two structures, a mot, a type of mound often artificial topped with a wooden or stone structure known as a keep, and at least one bailey, a fortified enclosure built next to the mot. The term, mot and bailey, is a relatively modern one, and is not medieval in origin. The word, mot, is the French version of the Latin motor, and in France the word mot was initially an early word for a turf, it then became used to refer to a turf bank, and by the 12th century was used to refer to the castle design itself. The word, bailey, comes from the Norman French bale, or basse corps, referring to a low yard. In medieval sources, the Latin term castellum was used to describe the bailey complex within these castles. One contemporary account of these structures comes from Jean de Colme around 1130, describing the Calais region in northern France. De Colmue described how the nobles would build a mound of earth as high as they can and dig a ditch about it as wide and deep as possible. The space on top of the mound is enclosed by a palisade of very strong hewn logs, strengthened at intervals by as many towers as their means can provide. Inside the enclosure is a citadel, or keep, which commands the whole circuit of the defences. The entrance to the fortress is by means of a bridge which, rising from the outer side of the moat and supported on posts as it ascends, reaches to the top of the mound, a Durham castle. Contemporaries described how the Mott and Bailey superstructure arose from the tumulus of rising earth, with a keep rising into thin air, strong within and without, with her stalwart house glittering with beauty in every part. Some were also built over older artificial structures, such as Bronze Age barrows. The size of mots varied considerably, with these mounds being 3 meters to 30 meters in height, and from 30 meters to 90 meters in diameter. This minimum height of 3 meters for mots is usually intended to exclude smaller mounds which often had non-military purposes. In England and Wales, only 7% of mots were taller than 10 metres high, 24% were between 10 and 5 metres, and 69% were less than 5 metres tall. A mot was protected by a ditch around it, which would typically have also been a source of the earth and soil for constructing the mound itself. A keep and a protective wall would usually be built on top of the mot. Some walls would be large enough to have a wall walk around them, and the outer walls of the mot and the wall walk could be strengthened by filling in the gap between the wooden walls with earth and stones, allowing it to carry more weight. This was called a gorillum. Smaller mots could only support simple towers with room for a few soldiers, whilst larger mots could be equipped with a much grander building. Many wooden keeps were designed with a bretasha, a square building that overhung from the upper floors of the building, enabling better defences and a more sturdy structural design. The early 12th century chronicler Lambert of Ardres described the wooden keep on top of the mot at the castle of Ardres. In the story above were the dwelling and common living rooms of the residents in which were the larders, the rooms of the bakers and butlers, and the great chamber in which the lord and his wife slept. In the upper story of the house were garret rooms, in this story also the watchmen, and the servants appointed to keep the house took their sleep. Wooden structures on mots could be protected by skins and hides to prevent him being easily set alight during a siege. 
The bailey was an enclosed courtyard overlooked by the motte and surrounded by a wooden fence called a palisade and another ditch. The bailey was often kidney-shaped to fit against a circular mot, but could be made in other shapes according to the terrain. The bailey would contain a wide number of buildings, including a hall, kitchens, a chapel, barracks, stores, stables, forges or workshops, and was the center of the castle's economic activity. The bailey was linked to the mot either by a flying bridge stretching between the two, or, more popularly in England, by steps cut into the mot. Typically the ditch of the mot and the bailey joined, forming a figure of eight around the castle. Wherever possible, nearby streams and rivers would be dammed or diverted, creating water-filled moats, artificial lakes and other forms of water defences. In practice, there was a wide number of variations to this common design. A castle could have more than one bailey. At Walkworth Castle an inner and an outer bailey was constructed, or alternatively, several baileys could flank the mot, as at Windsor Castle. Some baileys had two mots, such as those at Lincoln. Some mots could be square instead of round, such as at Cabal Trump. Instead of single ditches, occasionally double-ditch defences were built, as seen at Berkhamsted. Local geography and the intent of the builder produced many unique designs. Construction and maintenance various methods were used to build mots. Where a natural hill could be used, scarping could produce a mot without the need to create an artificial mound. But more commonly much of the mot would have to be constructed by hand. Four methods existed for building a mound and a tower. The mound could either be built first, and a tower placed on top of it. The tower could alternatively be built on the original ground surface and then buried within the mound. The tower could potentially be built on the original ground surface and then partially buried within the mound the buried part forming a cellar beneath, or the tower could be built first, and the mound added later. Regardless of the sequencing, artificial mots had to be built by piling up earth. This work was undertaken by hand, using wooden shovels and hand barrows, possibly with picks as well in the later periods. Larger mots took disproportionately more effort to build than their smaller equivalents, because of the volumes of earth involved. The largest mots in England, such as Thetford, are estimated to have required up to 24,000 man days of work. Smaller ones required perhaps as little as 1,000. Contemporary accounts talk of some mots being built in a matter of days. Although these low figures have led to suggestions by historians that either these figures were an underestimate, or that they refer to the construction of a smaller design than that later seen on the sites concerned, taking into account estimates of the likely available manpower during the period. Historians estimate that the larger mots might have taken between four and nine months to build. This contrasted favorably with stone keeps of the period, which typically took up to ten years to build. Very little skilled labor was required to build mott and bailey castles, which made them very attractive propositions if forced peasant labor was available, as was the case after the Norman invasion of England where the local workforce had to be paid, such as at clones in Ireland, built in 1211 using imported laborers, the costs would rise quickly, in this case reaching £20. The type of soil would make a difference to the design of the mot, as clay soils could support a steeper mot, while sandier soils meant that a mot would need a more gentle incline, where available layers of different sorts of earth such as clay, gravel and chalk, would be used alternatively to build in strength to the design. Layers of turf could also be added to stabilize the mot as it was built up, or a core of stones placed as the heart of the structure to provide strength. Similar issues applied to the defensive ditches, where designers found that the wider the ditch was dug, the deeper and steeper the sides of the scarp could be, making it more defensive. Although militarily a mot was, as Norman Pounds describes it, almost indestructible, they required frequent maintenance. 
soil wash was a problem, particularly with steeper mounds, and motts could be clad with wood or stone slabs to protect them. Over time, some motts suffered from subsidence or damage from flooding, requiring repairs and stabilization work. Although Mott and Bailey castles are the best-known castle design, they were not always the most numerous in any given area. A popular alternative was the Ringwork Castle, involving a palisade being built on top of a raised earth rampart, protected by a ditch. The choice of Mott and Bailey or Ringwork was partially driven by terrain, as Motts were typically built on low ground, and on deeper clay and alluvial soils. Another factor may have been speed, as ringworks were faster to build than motts. Some ringwork castles were later converted into mott and bailey designs by filling in the center of the ringwork to produce a flat-topped mott. The reasons for why this decision was taken are unclear. Mott and bailey castles may have been felt to be more prestigious or easier to defend. Another theory is that like the Turpin in Netherlands, or Vorburg and Hauptburg in Lower Rhineland, raising the height of the castle was done to create a drier site. Bibliography Armitage, L.S. The Early Norman Castles of the British Isles, London, J. Murray, OCLC 458514585 Bessman, Jan. C. Motts in the Netherlands, im Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, 12, pp. 211-224. Bradbury, Jim, Stephen and Matilda, The Civil War of 1139-53. Stroud, UK, The History Press. ISBN 9780750937931 Brown, Allen. English Castles, London, Batsford, OCLC 1392314 Brown, Allen. Castles from the Air, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521329323 Brown, Alan. Alan Brown's English Castles, Woodbridge, UK. Boydell Press. ISBN 9781843830696. Butler, Lawrence. Clifford's Tower and the Castles of York, London. English Heritage. ISBN 1-85074-673-7. Carpenter, David. Struggle for Mastery. The Penguin History of Britain 1066-1284. London. Penguin. ISBN 9780140148244. Chatelaine, André. Chateau Fort Se Féodalité en Isle de France, du Zimorosi e Massicli, Nonet, CRE Acutier, ISBN 9782902894161, Collardal, Michel and Chantal Mazard, Les Mots Castrales et l'Evolution des Pouvoirs dans la Alpes du Nord. O Origines de la Seigneurie, im Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, She, pp. 69-89, Cooper, Thomas Parsons, The History of the Castle of York, from its foundation to the current day with an account of the building of Clifford's Tower, London, Elliot Stock. OCLC 4246355, Creighton, Oliver Hamilton, Castles and Landscapes, Power, Community and Fortification in Medieval England, London, Equinox, ISBN 9781904768678, Creighton, Oliver Hamilton and Robert Hyam, Medieval Castles, Princes Risborough, UK, Shire Publications, ISBN 9780-7478-0546-5, Debord, André, A Propos de l'Utilisation des Mots Castrales, Im Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, She, pp 91-99, De Vries, Kelly, Medieval Military Technology, 
Toronto, Canada, University of Toronto Press, ISBN 978-0-921149-74-3, Ekrol, Oystein, Norwegian Medieval Castles, Building on the Edge of Europe, in Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, 18, pp 65-73, Erika, and Marie Flambard, Fortifications de Terre Residences en Normandie, in Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, XX pp 87-100, Hume, Richard, 12th Century Great Towers, The Case for the Defense, The Castle Studies Group Journal, No. 21, 2007-8, Janssen, Walter, The International Background of Castle Building in Central Europe in Skyrim Nielsen and Lund, Kaufmann, E. and H. W. Kaufmann, The Medieval Fortress, Castles, Forts and Walled Cities of the Middle Ages, Cambridge, U.S. Da Capo. ISBN 9780306813580. Kenyon, John R. Medieval Fortifications. London. Continuum. ISBN 9780826478863. King, J. Cathcart. The Field Archaeology of Mots in England and Wales. Einerke Zuber Sicture, im Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, v. pp. 107-111, King, J. Cathcart, The Castle in England and Wales, An Interpretative History, London, Rutledge, ISBN 0-415-003504, Le Page, Jean Dennis, Castles and Fortified Cities of Medieval Europe, An Illustrated History, Jefferson, U.S., McFarland, ISBN 9780-7864-1092-7, Lydiard, Robert, Anglo-Norman Castles, Woodbridge, U.K., Boydell Press, ISBN 9780851159041. Lydiard, Robert. Castles in Context. Power, Symbolism and Landscape, 1066-1500. Macclesfield, UK. Windgather Press. ISBN 0-9545575-2-2. Lowry, Bernard. Discovering Fortifications. From the Tudors to the Cold War, Risborough, UK, Shire Publications, ISBN 9780-7478-0651-6, McNeil, Tom, Castles in Ireland, Feudal Power in a Gaelic World, London, Rutledge, ISBN 978-0-415-228534, De Moylemester, Johnny, Mots Castrales du Comte de Flandres, Et it de la question d'apr les foules recent, Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, She, pp 101-115, Nicole, David, The Age of Charlemagne, Oxford, Osprey, ISBN 9780850450422. Nicholson, Helen J., Medieval Warfare, Theory and Practice of War in Europe, 300-1500, Basingstoke, UK, Palgrave Macmillan, ISBN 9780-333-763308, O'Connor, Kieran, Mock Castles in Ireland, Permanent Fortresses, Residences and Manorial Centres, in Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, XX, pp 173-182, Pettifer, Adrian, Welsh Castles, A Guide by Counties, Woodbridge, UK, Boydell Press, ISBN 978-0-85115-778-8, Pounds, Norman John Greville, The Medieval Castle in England and Wales, a Social and Political History, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 
ISBN 978-0-521-45828-3. Pringle, Denny's. A Castle in the Sand. Mots in the Crusader East, im Chateau Gaillard, Etudes de Castellologie Medievale, 18, pp. 187-190. Purton, Peter, A History of the Early Medieval Siege, c. 450-1200. Woodbridge, UK, Boydell Press. ISBN 9781843834489 Robinson, John Martin, Windsor Castle, The Official Illustrated History, London, Royal Collection Publications, ISBN 9781902163215, Skyam Nielsen, Niels and Niels Lund Danish Medieval History, New Currents, Coben Howens, Denmark, Museum Tusculane Impress, ISBN 978-87-88073-30-0, Simpson, Grant G., and Bruce Webster, Charter Evidence and the Distribution of Mots in Scotland, in Lydiard, Stysdale, Hans, Types of Public and Private Fortifications in Denmark, in Skyam Nielsen and Lund. Tabraham, Chris J., Scotland's Castles, London, Batsford, ISBN 978-0-7134-8943-9, Toy, Sydney, Castles, Their Construction and History, ISBN 978-0-486-24898-1, Van Houts, Elizabeth M., C., The Normans in Europe, Manchester, Manchester University Press, ISBN 9780719047510.